with a startup law firm and any other business. There's no separation. You are the founder. Marketer. You are the marketer. You are the finance guy. Yep. You are the, the tea girl. Mm. <laughs> you are the HR manager. Yep. You are everything. Welcome back to such an amazing session of the Playhouse, a conversation that is so edifying. I hope you're really enjoying it. If you're catching us here, I always say, don't just start, start at this point. Go and rewind and catch from the beginning. Uh, where we left this off, she's uh, Miss Mary Wangari is about to start her first business. Uh, she's been employed. Uh, now it's time for her to step out and jump into the waters. And my question was, what made you take that leap of faith? After five years uh, working um, as an associate, mm. I felt I had got sufficient experience. And, and I think I had also discovered that I truly loved the practice mm. as a lawyer. And uh, I felt that it was time for me to venture out. So probably I just felt like, oh, okay, this thing, it's risky to go out of my own because now I sacrifice my salary, mm. but um, I also have opportunity to grow the business the way I want to grow it. Because also when you're working under somebody, you, there are some decisions you don't make. Mm. Mm. So that is why I felt it was important. Um, the opportunity for partnership wasn't presented? No, no, no. But, no. but I also didn't look for it uh -huh. uh, at that point in time. So I just decided to go solo on my own. So I started my practice in 1996. 1996? Yes. And let me add, mm. you know, it's nice for us to say that you're a lawyer. Yes. But 1996, you become an entrepreneur. <laughs> yes, I started my own business this, as a lawyer. This, this doesn't mean that you're just, you have to think of rent, you have to think of... Uh, personnel, who is, uh, and there is a whole story around that. <laughs> Entrepreneurship always has those stories. Okay, 1996, you start. So, I asked a friend of mine, um, I'm thinking of starting my own uh, law firm. Um, you know, barriers to entry was very low at that time. Mm. It was easy. Because all you needed was a one-roomed office, a desk, and a secretary. Mm. So, my friend tells me, oh, there's a friend of mine who has an office on Luthuli Avenue mm. in Luthuli House. Ah, okay. So I'm, I'll talk to him. I'm sure he can give you the office. So I went and took the office. Mm. So he, he allowed you to take the office? Yes. Okay. So I took the office and I started. So I used to pay the rent. And then one day, when I was just uh, there, some bulky young uh, guy comes, stern looking guy comes. You are not paying rent. So I'm here to take you. <laughs> I'm here to take your possessions. <laughs> I don't understand, but you are paying him the rent. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, no, but I've been paying. These are the receipts. No, it's not my landlord. It's, it's an auctioneer mm. who has come. So who has sent you? The landlord has sent me. So I, I produced the receipts. But he told me, but these receipts are not, to, this money is not paid to the landlord. God. That's when I realized what I had, the blunder I had made. <laughs> <laughs> so my landlord... Is a tenant. Oh, <laughs> you're subleasing. Yes. So I had taken a subtenancy. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So, and now the main landlord was not being paid ah. by my landlord. <laughs> <laughs> Trouble. Uh -huh. So I'm like, okay, so who is the landlord? Uh, 
my my the the owner of the building was Stephen Kongo, ah. who also used to own Kunste Hotel in Nakuru. Ah. He was a prominent figure. Ah. So he was the owner of the building. So he's the one who had sent the auctioneer. Okay, okay, okay. Now I'm in serious trouble. So I tell the guy, okay, since these are my receipts, can I talk to the landlord? He said, okay, but if you haven't paid, you haven't paid. Okay, okay, okay. This is inconsequential. <laughs> 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 the lawyer has made the option here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm taken out to his office. So Mr. Kungo looks at me. Uh, so by this time now he's been given the receipts, the ones I presented. So he calls me, Mary Wangari. Yes. You say you are a lawyer? Yes, I am a lawyer. What kind of a lawyer are you? <laughs> <laughs> Who does not know that you cannot sublease ah. <laughs> a premises without the consent of the landlord? Ah, yeah, yeah, are you yeah. aware? So I'm like, yes, I'm yeah. aware. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's those moments yeah. when you, you feel very stupid. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I surely don't want to admit, yeah. but I'm feeling very stupid. <laughs> Uh, so I just said, uh, okay, yeah, I, I, I really did not realize he was not the owner. And I did not do my due diligence. Mm. So he looks at me and tells me, you look like you are someone who is honest. So let's have a deal. I will allow you one month. You take an office direct from me, mm. fit it out and move, then I'll deal with this guy. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's how he sorted it. What? Yeah, so I took now a direct tenancy from him. Of And, and I made the office very nicely, yes. paid the rent. And then now the day I moved, all those two things were taken from my landlord. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how it was sorted. Wow. But I always say that there are some things that happen to us and, um, and mistakes that we do that come Cut. as great lessons. They catapulted you. Yes. And for me, that lesson, the lesson that I took from that was due diligence. Mm. Due diligence. Because, I mean, if I had just done a bit of due diligence You'd have realized. before committing, I would have realized there's an issue here because mm. I don't have a direct relationship with the owner of the building. Mm. I have no clue. What made me feel even more silly was because the rent I was paying this guy was more than he was supposed to pay the landlord. What? So he was making a profit from me ah, and yeah, still yeah, not yeah, paying. Yeah, 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 yeah. He could have been rent free him. Yes, but he was not even remitting ah, yeah, yeah, the yeah. landlord's dues. Yet I was paying him much more. That guy was happy when end month came. Eh? What? He had, he had a salo from you. So I totally agree with Mr. Kungu. I was very stupid at that mm. time, you know. And I acknowledged. But I learned a lesson. But also, I want to find out from you, mm. because now you're becoming an entrepreneur. Yes. And let me say, getting clients is not a lawyer's job. A lawyer's job is to do the lawyer work. Yes. You get? Yes. So how are you... By the time you're making money to even pay him rent, mm. it means you have now your own clients. Yes, I have my own clients. How did you get clients? But um, with a startup law firm and any other business, there's no separation. You are the founder. Marketer. <laughs> you are the marketer. You are the finance guy. Yep. You are the, the tea girl. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You are the HR manager. Yep. You are everything. That is the reality of most of our businesses. Mm. Whether it's a law firm or a vegetable kiosk or a technology company, mm. most startups start, start like that. Yes. So it also means that you have to go an extra mile before you can get on your feet and now say, now 
I'm able to hire a finance guy, I'm able to hire a HR guy, mm. I'm able to hire a marketing person. Mm. Uh, so I'm able to get a lawyers under me. And to be honest, some businesses are never able to cross over to that point. Uh-huh. Where now you create structures and say, let the finance guy do the finance. Let the marketer do the marketing. And me as the founder, I focus on business development partly, yes. but also putting the structures and the branding and positioning and things like that. Mm. So that is the reality of many of our businesses. This is such a... So what did you do? How are you getting clients? I, 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 I'm almost sure that some of the clients, of course, came with you as you transitioned because of maybe the service that you gave them that they liked. Yes, I, I moved over with some, but very few, because mm. I was also very conscious, because we had a very good relationship with my boss, yes. and I didn't want Don't to feel poach. like yeah. I'm poaching from him, yes. but some came anyway, a few. But I also had created networks with the clients I was working with, so usually they would refer other clients ah, to me. Okay. Yeah, so a, a lot of the clients came by referral from either my friends, my family, mm. or, or the clients I was dealing with on other matters before. I get it. So that is how I build the practice. Mm. And I stayed in Luduli House for from 96 to 98 or 99. And then something interesting happened. You know where Ruthuli House is? Oh, I can see what you're about to say. <laughs> you said 98. Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> I, but tell them. So, <laughs> <laughs> now, first of all, when I went to Luthuli Avenue, yes. there is this common phenomenon or, you know, the, the street guys uh, snatching your watch. Borrow your watch. <laughs> yeah, they, by force. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so they just come and take it. Yeah. And I, that happened to me twice. But um hey Mary, you've seen life. As a, <laughs> <laughs> when you look back, you can laugh now. But I, <laughs> I don't think it was funny that time. Yes. But after two times, after like a month or so, they stopped. Mm. So I would walk and me, I'm just there. No one is talking to me. No one snatches anything. So I started asking myself, okay, so is it that to Mezoyana, we, we are getting used to each other? Or they have accepted me as one of their own, mm. you know? I didn't know the answer. But those incidents stopped okay. after about a month. Mm. So it was okay. There's no horror story coming out. There's no horror story. <laughs> but there's an interesting aspect. Now, around 98 or 99, um, I was crossing over from Ambassador to Kencom to go to the court. I, I usually used to call to carry a big briefcase mm. uh, with the files. And then next to me was, now the lights were red and there were many buses now. Uh, the, the lights were green, so the buses were coming to the ambassador stop. So we had to stop the pedestrians. Mm. So when we, are when we are about to move, there was a young couple next to me. They were waiting to cross. And the lady was pulling the man towards the side of Kencom. And the man asked the lady in a very irritated way, Where? Why now do you want me to take me to Nairobi? Why do you want to take me to Nairobi? Mm. You see, now we are on the side of Ambassador. Yes. Now the lady wants them to cross over yes. towards Moy Avenue, past yes. Moy Avenue mm. to Kencom side. Mm. And the gentleman is asking, why do you want to take me to Nairobi? Because for him, this other side is... <laughs> so I asked myself, I looked at them, I almost asked them, where? Where are we? Are we not in Nairobi? <laughs> From that moment... You are like, I'm moving to Nairobi. <laughs> I said, I am moving to Nairobi today. <laughs> So in a few months, I got an office in Old Mutual Building oh. on Kemadi Street. And I moved from Luduli Avenue. Now you are in Nairobi. Now I was in Nairobi. <laughs> <laughs> so 
when you said 98 <laughs> yes i actually thought you were going to talk about something different the bomb blast yes were you in nairobi doing the bomb blast i was Actually, that time, no, actually, that reminds me, I moved in 99 because 98, I was in Luduli House. Mm. 